Hey, it's Tim here. In Tableau 22.1, Tableau have added the ability to use Salesforce as a connection type in the virtual connections capability. You can see that I'm here right in the connection window and you can now go into the search box, type in Salesforce and you'll find that it's a connection there. What it will do is it automatically authenticate you. And if you're already logged in, you'll see one or many of the connections you have to Salesforce. You can just go ahead and pick the one you want. It will then ask you to validate that you do want to allow the application access to Salesforce. The connection uses the API, just like Tableau Desktop and Tableau Prep. If you then click Allow, you'll then go through and the connection detail will authenticate with software. And you'll then have a list of tables or views or whatever you call them in Salesforce on the left-hand side. Essentially, you can now bring anything into the connection window as you can with the virtual connections. So if you haven't checked out my video on virtual connections, go ahead and check out that video because that goes through this in much more depth. But I'm just gonna bring in the more traditional table. So we're gonna look for the account table and we're gonna bring in the opportunity table. If I can actually spell. Uh, what's the other one? Leads. These are just the standard. It's not called leads, it's called lead. Um, you can essentially bring in any connection that you typically people would use. And the benefit of doing this here is instead of multiple connections to Salesforce, you have one governed managed connection. Um, now there is a catch with this feature. Of course, it does require the data management add-on for you to be able to have things like virtual connections. But that said, if you do have this, it's gonna make connecting to Salesforce much, much easier and you'll have a streamlined process. The other thing this will do is help you manage extracts in one place. You can see here that on the top right hand side, you don't have the ability to do live connections, but this virtual connection will manage extracts for everyone that's connected to this data source. So it will become much easier to work with. The other thing you can do is you can of course use data policies. So if I go to this tab over here, you can see that the data policies window works just like you'd expect. In order to do this, I'm just gonna use a, a really fake example here because I'm not too familiar with the objects in Salesforce. That said, I will go and get the user table and you can see that I have a whole range of user tables that I can use. In this particular case, I'll just bring the user table itself just on its own. Then if we go over to the data policies, we can actually start using the user table as a way of managing entitlement. For example, if I create a new policy, I get this interface and I can go ahead and drag the user table as an entitlement table. This essentially means that the data sources we bring in from here on will check against the user table to make sure the user that's accessing the data actually has the rights to do that. You do this by essentially bringing in a table and using it as a policy table. And then what you need to do is you essentially need to match the corresponding columns. So if I wanted to set up a connection where a user could only see their own customers or their own clients, I'd bring in the user table, which should have and reflect all the users in Salesforce, and then match it up to the relevant opportunity field that matches up to that corresponding user. So essentially when someone logs in, everything would line up and this check would happen in real time. So I'll just sort of simulate this. I'll just go in here and type, um, uh, I think it's called uh, account or oh, owner. Yeah, owner ID. Uh, I never I never know how these uh, things are named in Salesforce. It's never, it's never the most sort of obvious naming. And the other issue with Salesforce is that the same thing means different things in lots of different instances because it's essentially been brought together from lots of different places. So um, if I just uh, type in user here, for example, um, I should actually go for ID. I think that's gonna be a better place. So let's say, uh, here we go. Uh, contact ID makes the most sense, or you can use manager ID, whatever makes the most sense. So I could essentially build out a security policy like this. It's basically checking everything against itself. I can also write a condition that uh, works alongside of that. And I can also add more complex uh, conditions to this field. I won't do that in this video. Go check out my other video where I do go through virtual connections in a lot more detail and a lot more clarity than I've done here. But I just wanted to update you that in 22.1, you can now use Salesforce with virtual connections. Check out some of my other videos on 22.1. And by all means, if you're watching this video and you're not subscribed, you are part of the massive group of people who aren't subscribed. So please help me out, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.